All right. Let me welcome to the show a whole human being who's out there doing God's work as well. CEO and president of the Chicago Foundation for Women. Let me welcome the one and only Felicia Davis Blakely. Hi. Hi, Karen. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming through. You're so South Side of Chicago that in your handle is South Side Girl, G-R- GRL 312. You even got the area code in there. You are Chicago through and through. Yes, I am. Twitter, Instagram, you know where to find me. I'm repping. Come on. You're <laughs> repping the 312. Why Why is that important? You know, for all, all of us come from a place, you know, but for you, it feels like Chicago is something special. It is. And particularly the South Side. And it's important to me. One, it's, a, it's, it's my view of the world. So growing up as a Black girl on the far South Side of Chicago, living in public housing, going to public schools, you kind of get a view of the world and like your place in it. And to me, it's that perspective that really drives the work that I do today and informs like all of the decisions. It helps me push um, and hold people accountable for what's going on in our communities today, especially um, in the work that we do at CFW for women and girls. All right. Before we get into that, tell us what the work is. What is the work? We were, we were talking with Dr. Patton. She said her life's work is to make sure that children are not beaten. So she's going to the, to the last breath she takes, she's going to fight for people to keep their hands off of children. For you, what is that? For me, I think it's, it's a combination of, of, of that, making sure, you know, girls, and women have opportunity that the barriers, these these barriers that are erected to prevent them from accomplishing girls like me, um, girls like you, um, that those are eradicated. So in some respects, girl, I'm going to be going to my last breath too, the way things are going right now, trying to push uphill against that type of um, intersectional inequity, right? Gender and also racial inequities. Mm. I was uh, having this conversation earlier um, with someone about being on these airwaves, promoting. Um, I've come to this conclusion that women need to lead. I came to this. I've always known it. But the more I sit with African ways of knowing, the more I study, you know, what happened before this interruption, this patriarchal, this, this uh, you know, colonization, enslavement, all, before all of this, you know, the village has specific things and everything that I'm reading, whether it's the book Inflamed, whether it's the coming, there's there's this notion that at the center of all indigenous but original people, there was this this notion of healing and the healers were specific. The healers were the people that understood the herbs and they were usually women. The keepers of the history usually were the women in society, the ones that taught the young people what they needed to do. Of course, there's rites of passage that the men do with the boys and the women do with the girls. But at the center was an understanding. Even today, you have the queen mothers in, in African cultures that you know kind of preside over what the leadership is going to look like. But if you think about the feminine energy. And I just talked with Iyana Van Zant about this. There's this notion when you are in tune with who you are as a woman, that you, that everyone eats at, at the table, you know, there's always going to be food for everyone, whether it's spiritual, emotional, there's always going to be nourishment. There's no lack in that kind of environment, unless you've been infected with, you know, anti whatever. So I'm I'm happy that you're doing this work because there's a you know I talked with Tiffany Alice and I'm, I know this is a long way to get to what you you're here to talk about but Tiffany Alice her whole work was to empower Black women with understanding money because she said if I teach this these skills to the one, women the kids are gonna be good and she was a school teacher taught little kids and she said if I teach their mothers I know the community is gonna be good is that is that what drives you to Felicia? Yeah, I so I agree with all of that. I do believe so. We believe in a world when you invest in women and girls, you actually are investing as catalysts for changing communities, right? It goes without saying. I mean, it has been said when you educate a girl, right? You educate, she becomes a mom, you educate a whole family. When you educate a girl or a woman, you educate the whole family. And they pass down those traditions and they teach others and they bring and they bring people along in the sense of community. Like for, from a historical context, the women have always been the community keepers and the holders of tradition. And the um, in many instances, you know, um, 
people who are passing down tradition and making sure that we remember in the communities today. So I grew up on the South Side. I say it's a combination of Miss Jenkins and Miss Jones because they have been holding down our blocks since the time immemorial, right? You might have other names where you come from, but for me, those women are Miss Jenkins and Miss Jones, and they take a young mother and they say, hey, baby, let me, let, baby girl, let me show you what you need to do. Let me show you how to do this. Let me teach you this. And, you know, as a young girl, I could go to a number of these women, right, in my community for different things. They wrapped around my mom um, and they wrapped around us. And I think we lose that. Like this patriarchal construct takes away all of that. And we would be wise to reconnect with some of those um, indigenous ways of being, some of the traditional ways of being where we center um, maternal energy and the connection to all things uh, um, related to women and girls. As we ha are having this conversation, I'm also, um, I understand that just like when we talk about Black liberation, there are folk that identify as white that feel like they're being oppressed right when we talk about you know rights there they feel like someone's coming for their rights when we talk about what you're talking about in your work there are men that feel like well what about us you know um why why are you only talking about the women see there's a war on men you you hear that and it's so weird to me um that that i don't know how to uh navigate it a lot of times because I get it. I know you feel that way, but why do you know what, what do we have to do to get folk to understand that talking about uplifting somebody doesn't mean that we're saying that you shouldn't have anything. You know, Isabel Wilkerson said this in her book to some equity feels like a demotion, right? Because to them, it's like, well, wait, if these people, these people, whoever that group of people are, whether it's trans non-binary people, whether it's women or girls, right, Black women, if these people get additional rights, then what happens to me? And one of the things that I um, always hold up when I speak to mixed crowds, and particularly for men, because I need them to understand that these inequities are already hurting them. Like, So the data is really clear. So if we just look at one measure, and that's on pay equity, if we look at that one one measure. In, in, my, in our region here um, in Chicago, in the Chicago region, if we were world class, there would be $57 billion more in our GDP just paying women equitably for the work that they are doing comparable to men, right? And so Equal Pay Day was celebrated for white women and uh, a couple of days ago last week. But for Black women and for Native women, you know, for moms, that won't come until August 15th. For Black women, that won't come until October. For Native women, that will not come until December at 54 cents on the dollar. And so one of the things that I, I think it's hard for people to understand is the way in which this system that is set up to treat some people inequitably is also hurting them. And so there is this notion that a rising tide does lift all boats. Like if we actually solve for that one thing, and there are lots of other stuff we could talk about, safety and other things for women, um, then it would actually, then so so to the men, you would be helped with that too, because that's money going into your family's pockets. Hello, uh, Southside GRL312, uh, Felicia Davis Blakely, President, CEO of the Chicago Foundation for Women. I am today years old. I didn't realize that when Equal Pay Day was directly proportionate to how much to pay. So it happened in, I thought it was just because it was Women's History Month. I didn't know that the month coincided with the level of pay. So men, whatever they get paid, it takes a woman till March to, to get the same pay. And I didn't know that until today. And then when is it for, for black women? Because it's 60 something cents on the dollar for right, them. It's 67 yeah. cents on the dollar. Okay. And so for black women, that day will not come until July 27th this year. Wow. 